If you hate N-Gons, well brace yourself as I'm about to show you how they can be used on curved surfaces for my solution to last week's modelling challenge. We'll start with the circle and change the vert count to 24, extruding it up and along the z-axis and flipping the normals. At the top of the extrusion we'll add in another circle and set its vert count to 12 and scale it in a little. We can duplicate and rotate that circle 90 degrees, bringing it out the front to block out the cylinder that will be sticking out the side. Back to the main mesh, join the extrusion and the circle together and extrude the inner circle and once again recalculate normals. From there we can extrude and scale to give some depth to the topmost cylinder, fill in an end gone at the bottom and an inset to support the edges, and divide the end gone into quarters so that we can cut the mesh up and slap on a mirror modifier. With the mesh divided up we can connect the two cylinders together with an end gone, scale down the extra circle to align this vert with this edge, and use vertex snapping to align the second middlemost vert with the flat face that we just connected. Duplicating and extruding this circle will allow us to run a boolean operation on the mesh, which will require a little bit of topology cleanup and and then enable us to connect the circle to add the final cylinder to the mesh. Much like before, we'll add an interior to the cylinder and finalise the block out of the mesh, but if we slap on a subdiv modifier it looks pretty terrible, so let's address that. We'll start by getting the easy support loops out of the way first for the inner and outer edges of the cylinder, which will sort out some but not all of the issues with the model. To address not being able to cut a loop across an N-Gon face, we can instead select all the edges we wish to place a loop along and subdivide them to easily add in the desired loop. We can then repeat that subdivision logic a few more times to support the bottommost edge as well as the outer edge of the main cylinder. The outer faces require some additional loop cuts which can be easily done by cutting in extra loops and finishing them off with the knife tool. Now you can resolve this area into quads but this large endgon face subdivides just as nicely, tucking the pole near to the inner edge and doesn't deform any of our surface normals. Finally to address the front intersection we can cut in a loop, subdivide five edges, slide in an extra loop, create a diagonal edge, dissolve these two edges and merge these verts to redirect the flow of topology. For some extra control over the edge widths, we can add in two additional loops around the connecting areas of this cylinder should you wish to tighten up the edges further. And there you have it, three intersecting cylinders with end gons on a curved surface with clean shading. There is also a fully quad-based solution, which I can also explain in a separate video if you guys are interested.